Well, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, my friends all across the happy globe today, and welcome back to Boggy Bottom Zoo. My name is Leaf, and it's always so great for you guys to join us once again for another little speed build. So today, we should probably talk about what we're doing before we get into constant rambling. Um, so today, we're actually building for the Cuvier's Dwarf Cayman. Uh, this animal was released way back in the day, back during the, I want to say the aquatic pack. Yeah, that would make sense. It'd be a little weird if it came out during, like, the Safari Pack or, like, you know, the Africa Pack. Now, that would have been very weird. But essentially what we're doing today is making a nice little habitat for them. So in case if you guys are new here, welcome. Always do love seeing those new viewers pop up. So in case if you guys aren't already aware, Boggy Bottom is essentially our wetlands-inspired zoo. Uh, pretty much every single habitat in here has some kind of water element of some kind, and I have an entire section based across crocodilians, caimans, and all that kind of stuff. So we have all that happening. Oh my god. We have all that happening right there. And it looks incredible in the end. Oh my gosh. This zoo is filling up so quickly. And it's just so awesome to see just like how much progress we've been making. I think I actually got like three speed builds done over the weekend. So we have a lot of really awesome content to cover. Once we actually do get through the week, be sure to stay subscribed. Be sure to stay put tuned. Uh, to watch it all unfold, because this is, like, summing up to be one of my favorite projects I've ever done. And, I don't know, there's just so much character in all these builds, it just feels so nice. But, essentially what we're working on over here is a little bit more of some realistic elements. And, by the way, I'm not sure if you guys saw this, I'm pretty sure some of you guys are new, from Delady Channel. Delady Channel, yeah, that's great. You guys can already tell I stumble over my words too much. Um, from Delay Designer's last tour... Uh, she was actually able to cover Sugar Pine Zoo, and that's like one of my other favorite projects I've ever completed. In fact, it's one of the only other projects I've ever completed. But essentially, welcome everyone. It's really awesome, and one of the things that I loved about that tour was just seeing all the small stuff I did over there through someone else's eyes. So I remember Delady was like, you know, oh my god, I can't believe he's like combining the natural rocks with the full rocks, and I'm like, I haven't done that in like so long. I'm going to start doing that again. So that's essentially what I'm trying to bring back over here. This was right after I watched that tour and I was like, all right, listen, the biggest inspiration you can be is to yourself. <laughs> so I'm being a little self-centered right there just as a way to kind of like find my own style again because I really had so much fun with it. And the tropical rocks blend in really well with, um, I don't know, this kind of like orangish tannish color that I'm going for. And essentially what else I'm having over here is kind of like a realistic habitat. Uh, it's nothing really too crazy. I always love having plaster at the bottom of my pools just as a way to kind of help it feel a lot more grounded in reality. A lot of the times when you do have underwater viewing in zoos, you want to have as less decoration as possible down there because keepers do need to go down there. They need to drain the water. They need to clean it. They got to scrub it, make sure it's all safe and healthy for the animal. And that's always something that you should, um, you know, you should always take with you if you are building kind of habitats like this. Uh, and yeah, that's about that right there. Uh, what I'm also doing is making these kind of like beams to help keep the glass up because we do have these very large, uh, very large, um, uh, glass viewing areas. And with all the water pressure, you got to make sure that it's staying upright, making sure that it doesn't have any cracks in it. So you got to have these like kind of often dispersed throughout the entire thing. We're not like, we're not any Georgia Aquarium over here at Boggy Bottom. We're kind of doing our own thing. So we can't really afford like that big tempered glass that they run over there at their joint. What I'm also doing is kind of working on the rest of the fencing. So I really did love this fence blueprint that I kind of made a while ago for the um, Spectacled Cayman. And we're kind of just repeating that all throughout here, just making sure that we're able to use that. And it looks really good. I don't know, I'm very happy with how well that all came out because it just looks very clean. What I'm also doing over here is a custom holding area. You guys can already tell that I have path going throughout like the bottom of the zoo. And that's just because I didn't want to build backstage areas, so I have it all going underground. And some zoos actually do have that. They kind of do have underground tunnels. So we're just going to pretend that we have the budget to afford that, but not tempered glass, as I said before. <laughs> but essentially what we have going on here is a little bit more of a unique, a little bit more dynamic shape. 
shape for the actual holding. You could probably infer that they keep a lot of stuff in there. Maybe they keep like the kitchens and stuff in there. Just as a way to keep it a little bit more grounded in reality in terms of like how large the actual holding is. Because I felt like this habitat was really missing like a key focus. And I really wanted to give that building a little bit more height as a way to achieve that. What I'm also doing is flooding this entire habitat with plants. I really wanted to have the ground feel a lot more built up in terms of all that. I really wanted to have it feel a lot more lush than, you know, all the other habitats. Just because, you know, the caimans would use the water a lot more. They tend to just, like, sit there and, like, kind of soak in those rays and whatnot. So we have that happening right there. And I also wanted another custom window. I can't get enough of these. And they're kind of, like, the staple of this area. And I love how fun they are to make. You kind of just overlap them a little bit. And, I don't know, you just have them angle out and use the other panels as a way to help it feel a little bit more centered. Um, I don't know. I really do like that. Really fun to do that jazz. What I also do is a little bit of a custom door over here so we kind of have this play out with some of those beams that we're using. I think those are the thick planks or the thin planks. I don't really know. They're planks nonetheless. Uh, and we kind of have that be centered right over there, kind of like bumping out of the door. And I also do a little bit of a kind of like, you know, gate right there. And I do line it up with some concrete and some plaster, just as a way to help it feel a little bit more grounded. Because when you do have interiors like that, it's oftentimes very much kind of industrial, if that makes sense. Uh, and we're also doing a custom roof. I was not excited to do this in the slightest. In fact, I literally hate doing custom roofs, uh, but apparently I'm doing them all the time in Boggy Bottom. So if you guys want to learn how to do that, uh, watch the rest of the series because I hate doing like all of these. But essentially what I have going on over here is the same kind of style that we had for a Spectacled Caymans. It's very much like a nice sleek kind of blackish gray. And I really do love how well it looks like all together because it just looks so clean, especially with the uh, solar panels. I do use a lot of those over all these buildings just because, I don't know, it just feels so much more cleaner. Helps it feel a lot more modern too, especially when zoos try and like practice conservation. You would definitely see them use a lot more solar panels and stuff, especially in Australia. That sun is always beaming down right there. So we have all that going on right there. And we also do try and like raise up those walls a bit more to help it feel a little bit more like, I don't know, help it feel a lot better. <laughs> And we also do a nice little bump up over here as a way to get in, you know, some more height into the build. And we kind of do angle that just a smidge. We kind of work with that with the roofing in just a little bit. But we do kind of line up with black instead of green. I feel like it was giving it a nice little contrast right there. And I don't know, it just feels a lot better when it all comes down to it. I really do love how... I don't know. It just feels so clean over here. And we had to work with the angles just a little bit because this is kind of like built on a slant on the roof. So we're kind of just working with that just a smidge. And we also kind of do use a little bit more green as an accent color right there. And we kind of do build those in right there. I don't know. I'm very happy with how well that all came out. And it looks pretty clean from afar. I don't know. I'm pretty happy with how well that looks. And we kind of do hide up those corners as well. Make sure that everything looks good from all angles. Except for the back. Yeah, because like it's completely surrounded by trees. We didn't, we didn't need to worry about that, guys. Uh, what I also do is a little bit of a roof over here. A little bit more of a dynamic shape. Because we're not really too worried about the back over there. We care more so about the front, the facade. We care all about appearances here. And we kind of do work on that right there. Just trying to add a little bit more framing. And I don't know. I really do like this build at the end of it. It feels like it's very simple. It's very small. It's nothing too... It's literally just a pond for Caymans. But it just feels so nice and so clean. And I really do love it. And we also add a little bit more... Um, I don't know, a little bit more grounding over here as a way to help the build feel a little bit more themed up. Because I feel like one of the biggest issues with this entire area is the fact that it doesn't really have a centralized theme. Other than the fact that it's kind of like modern. So we're kind of working with that just a smidge, just a little bit. And we kind of like play around with that. And I don't know, I really do like it in the end. It feels very nice. I don't know. Very organized, very clean. And you know, it's just nothing that like the rest of the zoo has. Because all the other parts of the zoo are very organic. They're very like kind of flowing with uh, 
I don't know, they're very flowing, if that makes sense. But this one, it feels very much like, you know, you have your habitat here, the other one's right here, the alligators are right there. What else do you need? And it feels very nice like that. I don't know. I, I like having a bunch of different kind of styles going on in a single part of the zoo. Not in the single part, but in a single zoo. That's what I mean. What we're also doing is using those beautiful Scavalovia bushes. I remember those were the hottest thing back when the game originally started and everyone was like, oh my god, these plants look so good. Now no one really uses them. They're such a beautiful, beautiful plant, but they just scream like, I don't know, they scream too tropical in some cases, but I think it kind of works. Uh, essentially what we're doing over here as well, we're kind of just making our way through like the smaller details of the zoo. I didn't want to change out those bamboo beams over there, so we kind of hide it with some more bamboo. Uh, that's a little, that's a little hint for when you guys get to tour this, which should be soon. Um, I think I, I have the map open right here. Let me actually check. Yeah, I have one, two, three, four more habitats to do. And then I have to do like the cafe and stuff like that eventually. So I have to work on that soon. But essentially we should be seeing this go up within like maybe two weeks, maybe three weeks max. So we can definitely see how all that jazz comes out. I'm so excited for you guys to be able to tour this. I'm hopefully going to send it to the lady again because I really do love how, like, I don't know, she gets to cover zoos and stuff like that. It's just really awesome and really refreshing to see, like, other creators kind of, like, tackle your builds and stuff like that. Especially with, like, Drew's showcase. We're going to have it on there. But I don't know. I'm just very excited for that all to play out. What we're also doing is kind of dressing up the rest of the surrounding area. In case if you guys don't know, I always love love to emphasize this whenever you do build it's not just about what's inside the habitat but it's about what's outside of the habitat too it helps frame it a lot more and it helps it like ground your zoo so if you have like a habitat some blank area and then another habitat always build inside that blank area even the, if it's like you know, just foliage, just like a couple ferns and like, you know, some mulch or something. Always build in there because it's so rewarding once you actually do finish a little bit of a section. Like I have it open on my computer right now and I'm just looking at like our little reptile area and it feels so lush and it feels so vibrant that like I'm so happy I was able to do those small areas in between and that always pays off guys always try and go like the extra mile for your habitats even though if like you know it seems a little hard at first do it but piece by piece just go one piece at a time and that's what really helps to pay off for these kinds of builds what I'm also doing over here is essentially what I was talking about before, just kind of building up the rest of the mulch and planted areas because this is like a very garden centric area. You definitely would see a lot more like organized mulch and stuff like that over here. So I kind of have that all happening right here and just kind of framing out those curbs. By the way, custom curbs. I cannot recommend them enough. They are a pain in the butt to do, but once you actually do end up doing them, it pays off so, so well. And it just looks incredible when all is said and done. I really do encourage you guys to give that a little bit of a shot because it really does help to turn an area from like kind of drabish to really organized, really clean, and helps it feel a lot more like a real zoo because zoos have all their own custom curbs. Um, I, I hate to break it to you guys, but if you go to two different zoos and you look at how their curbs are made, I'm telling you right now, it pays off so well to kind of like focus on those details. But anyways, here we are in the B-roll, and I do want to thank you guys so much for stopping by once again for another quick little speed build. I really do appreciate you guys stopping by. Welcome to all of our new viewers, by the way. The channel has been getting some awesome growth recently, and it's so great to see so many of you guys really pop in during like such a really awesome time. But all that being said, thank you guys so much for watching. I'll end it there. I'll see you all in the next video. Take care and have the most wonderful of wonderful days. Bye-bye now.